Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're working on number 26 on the new general curriculum math subtest. I like this problem a lot. It's an intro to functions, a great problem for elementary and middle school teachers out there to check out. Let's start by reading it over. Here we go for number 26. It says, which of the following ordered pairs would lie on the graph of the function f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1? And then we have these answer choices here. Now you notice it does use a lot of math vocabulary, like ordered pairs. Whenever we think of an ordered pair, this is these, these are the coordinates that are found on a coordinate plane, like a graph, an x, x on the horizontal axis, y is on the vertical axis, and an ordered pair describes a point on that coordinate plane. For example, if this was 2, 2 on this coordinate plane, the first of the ordered pairs is the is the number that matches up with the x-axis. The second one is the one that matches up with the y-axis. So we read this as when x is 2, y is 2. And that makes up an ordered pair on a coordinate plane. The question is asking which one of these ordered pairs or points lies on the graph of this function. Now there's a bunch of ways of solving this. I'm going to solve it around a conversation around the word function. In math, a function describes the relationship between two variables. And there's always going to be in a function, for example, the one that we have here, f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. In every function, there's going to be an input and an output. A lot of times you see functions, especially when they're introduced, they're introduced to students as function machines. And what the function machine is going to do is it's going to take an x input and it's going to do something to that x and out is going to come a y output. So we input an x into the function and out comes an output. Now in our function f of x, when we input that x in, we're finding the absolute value of that x, doubling it, and then minusing 1, and that gets us our output. This, this phrase, f of x, sometimes gets misunderstood, and some teachers get a little intimidated. All f of x is saying is that f of x represents the answer when you input x into your function. And it's another way of thinking about it is think about that f of x like a y. So basically, when you input x to your function, you get an answer, or when you input x to your function, you out plops an output or a y. Now, the way I'd like to solve it with you is, is to test out these inputs and outputs. Only one of these input and outputs is going gonna, is gonna to work. It's going to be a point that is in this function, and if we graphed it, would be on the line of the graph. Let me highlight that phrase. And the fastest way to test it is just to start inputting these values into our function machine and see if it lines up with the corresponding output. For example, if we put negative 7 into our function machine and we find the absolute value of negative 7, well, the absolute value of negative 7 would just be 7. And when we double 7, we get 14. When we minus 1 from that, our output would be 13. So again, when we input negative 7 into our function machine, into the function, and we do all these things, out comes a 13. Does that match up with negative 3 for A? No, it doesn't. So we could cross out A. A is not a point, an ordered pair, that exists on this graph. Cross it out. Now look at B and C. They both have the same input, but they have different outputs. So they're either both wrong, or one of them's right and one of them's wrong. So let's test it out. When we input a negative 3, we're going to find that absolute value of negative 3 first. Absolute value of negative 3 is just positive 3. We double positive 3 minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 gets us an output of 5. So when we input a negative 3 into our function, out comes a 5. Does that work for B? B says when you input a negative 3, you get a negative 7. That doesn't work. Cross it out. But C says when we input negative 3, we get a 5, positive 5. C is the correct answer, team. Now, if we just wanted to finish it off and do D, and we inputted the 5 for D, 
We do the absolute value of 5 is 5 times 2 is 10. Agreed? 10 minus 1 is 9. That doesn't match up with a 3. So team, the fastest way to solve problems like this, doesn't matter what type of function it is, the fastest way is to input each one of these uh, x values in the ordered pairs. And the correct answer is going to be the one that gets you the corresponding output. All right? Okay, team, I hope you enjoyed this video and this introduction to functions, input and output, and sort of ways of solving for functions, function problems like this. This is Chris Abraham, team. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.